please allow me to introduce myself. My name is Richard Hanley. I served the United States Air Force, 1952 until 1956. In 1958, I joined the New York City Police Department Service and the Police Commissioner's Special Crime Task Force. Until 1961, then I transferred to New York City Fire Department. Until September 1984, as a captain at the Harlem Hilton Firehouse, 143rd Street in Manhattan. My last eight years as a captain came to an abrupt halt when I was disabled in an accident on duty. I am here today to expose corruption and injustice done in the guise of subverted justice. This corruption couldn't exist without the collusion of judges, lawyers, and clerks. Like all Americans, I believed in a judicial system, but never thought that I would be a victim of such flagrant injustice and corruption. September 11, 2001 was a tragic day for America, and as a former firefighter in New York City, I trained and worked with many of the 343 firefighters that were killed. The day before mediation, one week after 9-11, I contacted my attorney, Douglas Nella, and told him I couldn't go to mediation the next day because of the trauma and depression caused on 9-11-01 a week ago. I also told attorney Nella I was being treated at the Veterans Hospital with Ambien to help me sleep and Valium three times a day to cope with the anxiety of 311. Attorney Nella told me he already met with my ex-wife and her attorney privately, attorney and her attorney Ross, and resolved the property and alimony issues. Attorney Nella gave me a folder of the final judgment of dissolution of marriage with Judge Foxman's name on the, on the court papers. The only thing missing was the date. In the folder, my ex-wife was given our 4,000 square foot house in New York, our Bahamian Club condominium in New Smyrna Beach, 10 vacant building lots in Florida Shores, one of the two repair shops purchased by my parents, and one third of the money left to me by my mother when she passed away uh, one and a half years after my ex-wife filed for divorce. I was given my parents' house in Vermont that they built in 1973, which was not a marital uh, asset. One of the two stations that my parents purchased was also given to my wife. The only marital property that I received was a gas station in Danbury, Connecticut. The condo I was living in was purchased by my parents' money before my mother passed away and was also given to me as my sole property, just as all property given to my ex-wife was listed as a sole property free and clear. An illegal clause, which was put into the papers, had asked me, uh, my attorney asked me to initial, and it stated my former wife may have an interest in my home, and I couldn't sell it, mortgage it, or take, it, take out an equity loan in case I needed financial help. It was to be security for my ex-wife's alimony. This was in violation of Florida law, which all properties should be free, given free and clear. The day after Attorney Nella gave me the dissolution folder, we went to mediation. The mediator, Attorney Gordon, came in and said Attorney Ross wanted $3,000 monthly for my ex-wife and $932 a month for me. I asked my attorney Nella what to do and he wouldn't speak to me and turned away. I told Attorney Gordon I couldn't do it. I said 26 years of New York City service and being married only 17 of the 26 years, I knew it wasn't fair. Attorney Gordon came back in and said Attorney Ross wanted $2,800 monthly for my ex-wife and $1,132 monthly for me or we would be tied up in court litigation. Again, I asked my attorney Nella what to do and he turned away from me. Attorney Nella represented me for over three years and knew I had appointments uh, in New York with the federal doctors to help me cope and myself and other firefighters and police officers to cope with the uh, problem of 9-11. Uh, and also after the doctors in New York, I was being treated at the Veterans Hospital and I was then sent to a trauma center for rehab in Massachusetts with other firefighters and policemen. I gave in and said I just wanted to go home, but I had to come back after lunch to sign the papers I initialed. The total mediation took probably 30 minutes. Attorney Gordon returned a third time and said Attorney Ross wanted $15,000 for himself. 
And that is the only time Attorney Nello said anything to me. He said to give Ross $7,500, which I agreed to, and left until after lunch. To this date, the legal bills between my ex-wife and myself are around $200,000. Leaving mediation, I asked Attorney Nello why I wasn't given the property and money. He, he showed me an original financial graph two years ago. The graph was made up by Attorney Nello and his CPA after one year of going over tax returns and canceled checks. Why wasn't marital property divided 50-50 as directed by Florida law? And inherited money and anything derived from it is, should be given to me according to Florida law. His response was, I couldn't believe it, was to sue him for malpractice and he walked away. Judge Green twice heard arguments to give me my home free and clear, but left it in my ex-wife's name as her life estate, allowing her to come into my home whenever she wanted to. The Judicial Qualifi Qualifications Commission's found Judge Graham in gross error. The Senate Oversight Committee agreed with the Judicial Qualifications Commission, but could not impeach Judge Graham because they could not prove corruption. Attorney Ross, Judge Graham, and Judge Brees were given the following papers to guarantee the alimony. Governor Patterson sent me a copy of the New York State Constitution with his stationery that stated that the alimony and pension are guaranteed by the New York State Pension Bureau. Commissioner Connolly, New York City Commissioner, sent a letter and spoke with the Attorney Ross. After sending the letter, Attorney Ross called him up and he also stated that the city would pay the alimony directly to my ex-wife if I defaulted. The Honorable Peter Vallone, President of for 13 years of the New York City Council said the city was responsible for the alimony if I defaulted. Honorable Peter Vallone is also a member of the New York State Bar Association for over 50 years, also practices before the United States Supreme Court, and his three sons are attorneys, and one of the uh, sons is now on New York City Council also. Since my divorce, my ex-wife received $375,000 in alimony, and I received $126,000. She still has all the property I gave her at mediation. Right now, the stocks that I gave her, that I inherited from my mother, are worth over between two and a half and three million dollars. And I still pay alimony. And she has all the property that we had, all these marital assets. Judge Brees had all the information presented above given to him, but he left, let Judge Graham's ruling stand. Attorney Ross, and Judge Brees socialized outside the court, and their daughters went to college together. I think that Judge Brees should excuse himself from any case with Attorney Ross. Attorney Ross also made his statements and lies in court. One of the statements is that my wife had a tape, and there's no such tape that exists. He said, I threatened my wife that I was going to destroy or ruin her. Under oath, I wanted to go on stand. I disrupted the court because I wanted to disprove these things. My attorney would let me not go take under oath, and the judge ignored it. He also said that I threatened him. And my brother-in-law was a good friend of mine. After the divorce, for several years, we socialized together. And Attorney Ross asked him for a letter stating that I threatened his sister, which he gave to Attorney Ross. All these were lies, just like everything that goes on in this courthouse, between the judges, the lawyers, and the clerks. Taking my condo as security for alimony is illegal. It is even against the Constitution when a judge can seize property without just cause. Any judge or lawyer will tell you the court did not have subject matter jurisdiction to grant the life estate that was not granted to my ex-wife in a divorce. I hope someone with a sense of justice, morals, ethics, and conscience will contact me or we'll contact rather Pam Bondi, the Attorney General of United, of Tallahassee, up in Tallahassee. A whistleblower from this court can bring justice. I hope someone in the court will do this. We need someone with a sense of morals, ethics, and justice. Now, I have documents here of forgeries from the uh, courthouse. One document here stated I was represented in front of Judge Graham by Attorney Nella. Now, Attorney Nella never appeared at this attorney. The paper that the court had, the court clerk, someone changed it with whiteout, 
saying I was not represented and put Attorney Nello's name on the paper. I also have the letters here from the government, Dr. Usadi, who was treating me for uh, depression and uh, the trauma affected on 9-11. And she stated there was no way I could possibly have gone to court for mediation, the condition I was in and the medication I was taking. I was incapable of taking care of myself or defending myself. But again, they ignored all these papers from the government and from governor. Everyone they got, they ignored. The judges worked together. They were attorneys before they became judges. And the judge and lawyers socialize together and the clerks are given gifts. I would like to know when they have these different tributes to the judges, where the money goes and how much is paid. We're in a situation here where we have no justice in this courthouse. And anyone who wants to do anything can do anything they want. I have the papers here from the Senate Oversight Committee, which found Judge Graham in gross error. I have the papers here from the uh, Judicial Qualifications Commission, where they found them in gross error. All these papers, I have a, a ream of them, are all forgeries, all documents. Here's a letter from uh, Attorney Roy stating that at mediation, he observed me and uh, found me competent and uh, not incapacitated in any way. I had not seen Attorney Ross for months before this and months after this. He lied on papers. He lies on everything he does. My attorney goes along with it. I don't know why. But anyone who goes through a divorce only goes to mediation once. And between them, the legal fees are $200,000. $200,000. It's criminal. And when the judges get this money, when they have a different functions for them, they have to pay so much a plate. Does internal, serve, internal Revenue Service follow where this money goes? Attorney General Bondi should follow the money. I hope Attorney General Bondi does get a copy of this film and all the injustices that, are corrupt, that, are, uh, that appear at this court. Attorney Bondi is a lovely person and honest and ethical. And she has a good career and I'm hoping she will edit this film and help us. We need all the help we can possibly get. I have many more documents that are forgeries and case laws, parts of laws that were of, uh, ignored. I have all these laws that were, got, where were broken by the government, by the court, by the judges and the lawyers. Like all money inherited is supposed to go to the person inherited to it or anything derived from it. And marital property is supposed to divide it 50-50. None of these things were done in my case. I would like to see this film go to Congress and have congressional investigation also. I do know there are people that are going to be speaking in other courthouses because it's rampant. Not only in Volusia County, Volusia County on internet was compared to Cook County, Chicago. They said Cook County, Chicago wasn't as bad under Al Capone as Volusia County is today. And that is some statement that you can get on the internet. I can't believe it. That this courthouse is worse than Al Capone's courthouse in Cook County, Chicago during Prohibition. Apparently, anything you want, you can get at this courthouse. Somebody in this courthouse will have to come forward. They may cut a deal instead of going to jail if they do get the corruption. And hopefully, someone will be a whistleblower. They'll see justice and will know what I've gone through and what the other people have gone through. We live in America, and we're entitled to see justice, and we're entitled to fair play. And we come to court for justice, not for corruption, not for lawyers to build up their own personal finance. All they do is get, when you have money, they're going to try and keep appealing, going, and so on, as long as they can. My case took over three years for a simple firefighter and a housewife. All the papers were gone through. Even the day that my final mediation, the half hour I was there, the CPA that my attorney Nella had, she gave me a bill for $1,400 because she said she had to take the day off to be there. Uh, attorney Gordon charged for six and a half hours. My attorney handed me a bill for $3,000. Uh, attorney Ross uh, I get me a bill for $7,500. That was just for one day. And they take victimized because I was weak. I'm on medicine, on medication, a veterans hospital. I still go to the veterans hospital for help. 
It takes a long time to get over the trauma of things I've been. If anyone's been in the military or knows people in the military, they know how it affects a person. And they can't, I can't take care of myself. I can't function, but just barely function. And that's the problem. I am going to try and get a good lawyer and go back to court and possibly expose this because I have a good doctor at the Veterans Hospital and they're helping me. And the better I get, the more I'll be able to take care of myself and possibly get justice again. Uh, I don't want to take any more time above it, but I have a whole list of all the laws that were broken. And if anyone wants to call me or about it, they're more than welcome to. I don't know where else to turn except get another attorney because it's costing me over $100,000 already. But I do have to get justice. I cannot sleep at night or first thing in the morning. All I think about is the injustice and the corruption, how it's affected my life. And I thank God I have the Veterans Hospital. They've been very good to me. And I did have a great job in New York City Police Department and New York City Fire Department. The fire department was probably some of the best times of my life. The brotherhood there was just like being back in the military again. We're very close. And firefighters in America will know what I'm talking about when they see this film. The professional firefighters and the volunteer firefighters, they're all great. We are a brotherhood. And hopefully some of them that see this film will talk about it to amongst themselves. Right now there's over 750,000 firefighters in the United States. And they have wives and children. And the men and women in the fire department and the police department should take this film and they should understand what I'm going through because it might happen to them. It could happen to anyone. The people that are seeing this film have no idea how corrupt this country is. And what happened to me can happen to anyone. It's just a matter of circumstances. I led a good life. I raised three daughters, went to good universities, and they have master's degrees. My oldest daughter is now back in law school. I don't know the answers to the problem, but I do know the corruption that exists in this country has to be addressed. And the people that don't know about it have to watch this film and do something about it. Go to their local congressperson or the congress uh, or senator, because these things have to be exposed. The only way it's going to be done is from the ground up, like our founding fathers. We have to revert back to their conscience, what they did to find, found this country. They did a great job. And this is what we have to do. We have to stand together. We cannot stand alone. As a firefighter, as a policeman, and as the Air Force, all I did with my whole life since I was 17 years old was serve the public. And I believe in a justice system. I believe in serving the public. And the only way we can have a better society is by everyone doing their job, serving the public, and always seeking justice. If you don't stand up for justice, you're going to be knocked down by injustice. So you have to stand up for people like myself and the others that you see. As I was speaking, I just saw a new BMW convertible go by, and I believe it was Attorney Ross, my ex-wife's attorney. That's ironical, isn't it? He just drove by. And the other people know him that are here, they know him too. I don't know if he bought the BMW convertible with my money or not, but uh, it's a cute little sports car. And, and he's bought property now, and he has other things. He's doing well for himself. But again, it's victims that are paying for all those things that he has and my attorney, Douglas Nella, also. Many veterans who are not here have given their lives supreme sacrifice for justice and for a good system. I have been a, a commander of the American Legion Post in New York City at the Federal Building for over 20 years. We work in the blind veterans office and we take them around. So I do have a personal interest in what happens to veterans. And I've dedicated my life to helping veterans, even when I was with the police department and the fire department. We have uh, veterans organizations in both those departments. And our country is only as strong as the people that are here. If the civilians, the military, and the people who work for the courthouses, they don't stand up for justice, there's no use even having a country. Because what we stand for is gone, it's collapsed. The corruption is there and it won't come back until the people take it back. Our founding fathers are turning over in their graves because of this injustice and corruption. In this courthouse we're in front of right now, everybody in the courthouse knows, they all know about the corruption that goes on in here. Somebody has to come forward and give the evidence to the Attorney General's office, Pam Bondi. That's the only way you're going to get this done. It's the only way we're going to get justice. Veterans, firefighters, police officers, school teachers, no matter who you are, 
You can be a victim like me. You think, may never think it will happen, but it's possible.